Hi, I'm Selena Campbell, Director for Member Services at Progeny, a leading fertility benefits management company. Male infertility, it's more common than many think it is, and there's quite a lot that men can do to help improve their reproductive health. But men won't be able to do any of these fertility boosting things if nobody ever talks about it. So we're here to talk about male infertility, and we're gonna do it with the help of an expert. Dr. Sharon Jaffe, a reproductive endocrinologist with the Center for Reproductive Medicine in Orlando, Florida. But before we dive in, I just ask that you please subscribe and like this video, because doing so helps others to find it. So let's get something out of the way right on top here. How common is male infertility? What percentage of infertility is due to male factor? It depends which source you look at. On average, I would say that at least 20% is attributed to only the male factor, where up to another 40% is probably combined both man and woman. Male infertility is present in a lot of infertility cases, but the good news is that in many instances, men can do some fairly simple things to boost their reproductive health. If a man drinks a lot or smokes, it's ideal to stop smoking completely. I would recommend three months before if they're having infertility issues. If they're drinking, it is recommended that a man drinks no more than five units of alcohol when they're trying to get pregnant. If they're undergoing in vitro fertilization, studies have shown that zero alcohol will potentially improve embryo quality and success. Men generate new sperm throughout their lives, so their health in the moment plays a role in the health of that sperm. The choices men make can directly impact their fertility. Of course, in many instances, male infertility will be present even after making these lifestyle changes. In these instances, there are plenty of options. One option, perhaps the most expensive but most successful option, is to utilize ICSI in an IVF cycle. ICSI is intracytoplasm sperm injection, and it involves injecting a single sperm into an egg to fertilize the egg. This is a wonderful treatment option that has tremendous results, but it does require IVF, which is invasive and can also be quite expensive. So we asked the doctor what other treatment options exist in male infertility. One of the most common treatments used to promote fertility in men is something called intrauterine insemination. If a man has an adequate sperm count, adequate swimming, and there's enough normal appearing sperm, we can actually do a wash-up procedure and take the best sperm and put them high up in the uterus so more sperm will get to that egg than can ever naturally get there. And that will more than double their pregnancy rate if they're having infertility issues. Other things that can be done is they can be treated with hormones, just like a woman can be treated with hormones. They can be treated with hormones to help improve their spermatogenesis. One of the big things that are done that I do for treating men is I modify their diet. I optimize their health because healthy diet, optimal weight, even in men, is going to help improve their fertility. And of course, I fix all their social habits. That is a plus. If they're smoking, it's no smoking right away or the best that they can do. I look at what medications they're on. Some men are on medications that might be preventing fertility and I stop those medications. Well, I personally will not stop them. I will send them to their doctor and have their doctor stop them or make appropriate adjustments. Now, let's talk about some male fertility myths. One of the most famous pieces of advice given to men about fertility turns out to be a myth. And that's the idea that men who wear briefs instead of boxers will experience infertility. That's actually a myth. It's not the tight underwear, it's actually the scrotal temperature. The testicles or scrotum are outside the body for a reason. Sperm production requires to have a temperature of about two degrees less than body temperature. If a man is wearing briefs or briefs or boxers, it doesn't make a difference as long as it's not causing him to have an increase in temperature. So briefs are probably just fine. Another thing that has been said to cause infertility in men, but may not actually do that, is cycling, riding bikes. The idea was that men who ride bikes frequently are putting undue stress and pressure on their testicles, resulting in infertility. Well, Dr. Jaffe says that is another myth. You asked me about riding bikes and sperm production. I'm an avid cyclist. 
And I know lots of my cycling friends have children, have not had problems having children. And I've read all about cycling causing infertility. They even sell a bicycle seat design for men trying to get pregnant to put the pressure points in the correct spot. However, there was a study recently done that for even men who ride a bicycle eight and a half hours per week, there was no decrease in fertility. Debunking myths is fun, but on the other hand, you shouldn't get all of your health information from videos online. So if there's some behavior that you're doing that you fear may be impacting your fertility, then don't hesitate to talk to your doctor about it. If you're riding bikes more than nine hours a week and feel like that must be causing an issue, then it truly doesn't hurt to go chat with a doctor about it. The ability to have these conversations and to enter them with an open mind is paramount when it comes to reproductive health. And that brings us to another myth. The myth that many men tend to think. And that's the idea that it can't be me, it has to be my partner. Well, one of the big myths that a lot of people say, oh, it's my wife, it's not me, I have a child. How old is that child? That's the real question. They go, nine years old. I said, hold on, a lot can happen in nine years. Or even two years old, a lot can happen in two years. So that's definitely one of the myths. Uh, let's see what other myths people, oh, they say, oh, my ejaculate looks good. What do they think they're seeing? You're not seeing the sperm. Even when you do a semen analysis that looks good, it doesn't mean that the sperm are great. There are still DNA problems that you don't see with a semen analysis. It's important when it comes to your health not to jump to conclusions. Don't assume the worst, but also don't assume the best. If you're having trouble trying to conceive and you're a man, then it really makes a lot of sense to go talk to a fertility doctor about it. There's one more myth we'll address today, and that's a big one. There's a lot of advertising out there about low T, low testosterone, and there are now a lot of companies offering solutions to low T. But a big myth, a myth that needs to clearly be debunked, is the idea that taking testosterone will make a man more fertile. Some people think by taking testosterone, they're gonna increase their fertility. Quite the opposite. By taking testosterone, you actually cause your pituitary and your hypothalamus to top, stop telling the testicles to make the sperm because they're already seeing the testosterone. And if they see testosterone, they stop the hormones, LH and FSH, that tell the testicles to make testosterone because it's already coming there. And when you make testosterone, you're also theoretically making the sperm. So if you give the feedback mechanism, if you give the testosterone to the pituitary, it says, oh, we have testosterone, let's stop the hormones. Well, you can come in with zero sperm at that point. It's important to grasp everything we've spoken about here today if you're trying to conceive. But there is another side to male fertility that shouldn't be overlooked. And that's the idea that male infertility could be a symptom of a larger issue and an early intervention might turn out to be a game changer. Some people think fertility in man has nothing to do with their health, but it actually does have a lot to do with their health. It could be the first sign of an underlying medical problem. Um, one of the things it could be a sign of is vascular disease, especially if they're having impotence. It could be a sign that they have a tumor in their brain called a, a prolactinoma. I once had a man who came to me, he had zero sperm. I found that his prolactin level was very elevated. I gave him medications, of course, after evaluating the tumor. It decreased his prolactin level and the couple conceived naturally. Men, don't take your health for granted. The male fertility evaluation is very simple and it's not something to be avoided. Male infertility is common but treatment can be as simple as lifestyle changes or as straightforward as IUI cycles, so don't hesitate. Get the information you need to move forward. If you want to learn more about male infertility, we have some more videos on this on this channel. You can find articles and other materials at progeny.com education. And if you want to hear some stories from others who've dealt with all of this, you can find those on our podcast, This is Infertility. And of course, don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and to subscribe to this channel. That really helps others find this information.